Hey everyone, I'm Marcus Philly, founder of Functional Bodybuilding. Pleasure to be with you here today. We're going to be doing a minimalist functional bodybuilding workout today. That's a reduced amount of equipment for all of you who are looking to get started with functional bodybuilding. Try one of our training sessions. You don't need much. All we're going to be using today is a single dumbbell for our workout and your body weight. What is functional bodybuilding? Functional bodybuilding is a method that I've been working on delivering worldwide for the last four years. And really what it is, is a combination of functional training and bodybuilding. And we're here to just say that you don't have to choose aesthetics over function or function over aesthetics. We've really found a place where they can overlap very seamlessly in a training program to make you look good and move well. And one of the most common things that we've heard from clients over the years is, hey, I feel super functional and strong, but I just don't like the way I look or vice versa. I love the way I look, but I don't like the way I move. I have aches and pains. So rather than find yourself in one side or the other, we bring you together by doing the following. We honor time under tension principles. We'll get into that later. We use compound exercises and we use isolation exercises. We're focused on aesthetics, but we're also focused on function and metabolic work capacity, getting your fitness level elevated. Thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoy this workout. All right, we're gonna get this started with a little body weight prep. I don't think you need tremendous amounts of warm ups to get into your workouts. If your workouts are so hard that you need to warm up for 30 minutes to start, I think you should dial back the intensity and the challenge of your workout so that you can make the most of your time. So here we go. A simple body weight prep is what we're gonna do right now. This is two to three rounds of three body weight exercises that are just gonna take your joints through a full range of motion. The first one we're gonna do is called a push up to plank toe touch. So you're gonna come down into a push up. You're gonna go down and up, alternate touching one toe and then the other. Give me eight good reps. If you have to push up on your knees and then to your toes, that's fine. Warm up the chest and the shoulders and a little bit of flexibility in the hamstrings. All right, the next one we're gonna do is a squat with a thoracic reach. So keep your feet flat, squat down, and then reach up on the left. Up, squat down, up on the right. We'll get four on each side. Two more. Great. Add in a little bit of isometric hold. We'll do a side plank with the rotation. So hold your hips up, top arm is up, reach under, and back up. That was six on that side. We'll switch. Okay, that's one circuit. Let's do that again. Another time each. So back to our push up to alternating toe touch. Let me go down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, another set of squats, alternating reach. When you squat down, 
Try and get your knees to point out to the side a little bit. It doesn't have to be too aggressive with the knees out, but we just don't want them caving in. That rotation to the ceiling when you're at the bottom of your squat is great for opening up the thoracic spine. That's the upper back, kind of between the bottom of the ribs and the neck. A lot of us get stiff up there from sitting so much. I love this before training. Great, that was eight. And then we'll do another set of side plank rotations. Really bridge those hips as high as you can. I want to feel a good contraction in your oblique down here. And then as we're rotating, what we're actually doing is we're warming up this shoulder blade that's supporting me because it's the one that's facilitating the rotation of my body. Cool, that was six. Switch to the other side. And same idea, keep those hips high. Okay, that was two rounds. You're welcome to do a third round. I got my breathing going, my body feels ready. We're gonna jump into this EMOM, hang in there, stick with me. Let's go. Okay, it's time to get into the meat of this workout. That's the every minute on the minute workout I described before. Four exercises. I'm gonna do a quick demonstration of each one because I want you to see it before the clock is actually on. Maybe you get a practice repetition in or two. There are two ways we're gonna hold the dumbbell for these four different exercises. The first one is going to be what I'll call the goblet position, okay? holding it just underneath your chin, like you're holding up a goblet, all right? This is gonna happen when we're doing the first exercise, which is called a tall kneeling to standing. And you're gonna alternate which leg you lead with on the way up. So that's a right leg, that's a left, okay? The second exercise we're gonna use for that same grip it's called a Cossack squat, also known as like a lateral lunge. Wide stance, and I'm gonna sink into this leg and back up, sink into this leg and back up, okay? All right, the next exercise and grip, we're calling this a crush grip. So you're gonna put some pressure in on the dumbbell, hold the outsides, you're gonna curl and press. Curl and press. All right, crush, grip, curl, and press. Next one, with the same crush grip, you're gonna get down onto the floor. You're gonna get your body into this 90 degree leg position, holding that dumbbell right over your chest. And we're gonna do floor presses in this position with that crush grip, okay? So we got a crush grip, we've got a goblet position, and we got those four exercises. Now hang with me, we're gonna go for 16 minutes. I got a clock up here. Follow me on the rep counts, okay? We're aiming for about 30 seconds of work, followed by about 30 seconds of rest every round for a full 16 minutes. So one-to-one -one work to rest. I'll call out the, the movements. I'll also call out the reps. And you're gonna follow along as closely as you can with my cadence and my tempo, right? We're gonna try and move at this slow controlled pace where we're always in control of the weight. Okay, you all ready? I'm ready, here we go. 10 second countdown. Throw my timer off to the side. We're going tall kneeling to standing. Here we go.
All right. 10 reps. If you stop at eight or if you need to stop at six, that's all right. That took me about 32 seconds to do those 10 reps. We're going right into the dumbbell curl to press crush grip style. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. That was eight reps for me. Again, took me about 32 seconds. You can go for that six to eight rep range. If you wanna go for 10, be my guest. By the way, I'm using a 50 pound dumbbell. That's on the heavier side. If you wanna go down, of course you should. Now let's get that goblet and Cossack squat. Here we go. Doing my best, keep my feet flat. If that back toe comes up a little bit, like on my left leg right now, that's okay. All right, that was about eight to 10 reps as well. Aiming for about three to four seconds per repetition. Okay. We gotta get that floor press in that 90-90 position. We're going crush grip style. So do make an effort to squeeze that dumbbell inward. Three, two, one, and we're pressing. Again, 10 reps. Okay, that was round one. We made it through each exercise the first time. We got three more sets of that. If you're listening to my breathing, I'm kind of matching the cadence of the actual exercise. So, with each repetition, getting a breath in. Keep breathing. The weights are light. You don't have to brace super hard. Okay, round two, here we go. Try and match those same reps as the first round. That was 10, about 36 seconds that time. Big, big emphasis on the lower body today with unilateral training, just one leg at a time. It's great for hip strength and low back strength as well as leg strength. Okay, curl to press. Here we go.
I love alternating the grip on the dumbbell. It's a great way to take the simple implement like a dumbbell and add a lot of variety to how your body is getting stimulated. So crush grip feels different than the goblet. I'm sure you're feeling that right now yourself. Crush grip is a lot more work on the biceps and the arms. Who else is feeling it up in the chest and the shoulders? I am, that's for sure. Okay, getting down into that 90-90 floor press position. By the way, the 90-90 position, when your lay, legs come up like that, that is a great tool to make it a more complete lower body, excuse me, abdominal exercise as well. So this is making me force my abs to engage in a way that they would be not engaged if they were on the floor. Okay, let's go. Too much talking. So to reiterate that about the abdominals, when I'm in this position, pushing my tailbone, pushing my low back in, raising up the chest, I'm almost crunching the abs, head and shoulder are up. That is definitely gonna light up your core, your hip flexors, if it feels like it's too hard, go ahead and put your feet down, no big deal. That's supposed to be an upper body exercise too. Don't want the abs to limit you. Okay, we're halfway through everyone, let's do it. We got another four, Movements back to back for eight minutes. As you're starting to fatigue, this is the time to really tune in how your body's moving. Keep the quality of the exercises high. If you start to get sloppy with your technique, you don't feel in control, lower the reps down. Whew. Curl, press. Here we go. I love mixing in those isolation exercises like a bicep curl with something that ends up feeling a little bit more full body and compound by adding in a press, movement complexes. It's a big concept at functional bodybuilding, the way we train. All right, Cossack. Lots of control on the way down. Ooh. 
So that movement I know is really challenging for some of you, flexibility wise for sure. You're gonna feel a big stretch. You might not feel like you can get as low as me. Even if you're just shifting your weight a little bit side to side, keeping your feet flat, that works too. On the last round, I'll give you another tip on how you can make it a little easier. If you want an added challenge on this one, straighten those legs out. And remember, you can always go back to the floor with them. Okay, three rounds down. I am sweating, I'm breathing heavy, and we're doing weight training. So this is the power of time-restricted weight training sets, fixed rest periods that are short, get a good cardiovascular benefit from this too. Okay, last time on this round, here we go. Nice. Okay. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna show you another quick variant on the curl to press while we're here. Keep it the same if you want. You can also come down and do it in this tall kneeling position. Whew. Ready? Here we go. What this tall kneeling position is gonna demand is that you stabilize with your core you stabilize with your glutes and your hips a little bit more. You don't have as much balance and stability by being on your feet. So we have to create that stability with our hips and our abs. Ah. All right. All right, like I said, with the Cossack squat, you want a, a tip and a hack on how to make it a little bit easier. If you've got like a, a book, a thick book, two inches, one inch, slide it under your heel and just focus on that one heel and that one leg at a time. So as I go down this way to my right, I'm gonna do all five over here. The flexibility on that right ankle is what limits people from getting low, often. Ooh, okay, switch. So, if you put a little book underneath there, it's gonna let you have better stability, flexibility, stay more upright, not feel like you're bending over so much. It's worth a try, but make sure that that book is sturdy. It's not gonna slide around on you. In the, in the gym, we use weight plates to put underneath people's heels, which aren't that likely to slide around, but a book on your carpet might not be the best situation. So just be sure it's sturdy. Here we go, last set, guys. I'm gonna go for that advanced version. Five, six, staying in control. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, yeah, did it. Whew. Finish up those last couple reps. 
Way to go. We're at 15 minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. You're gonna let this time run out to 16 minutes. Catch your breath. Thanks for joining me. I really hope you enjoyed this workout. The every minute on a minute is a format we use often here at Functional Bodybuilding, mixing together different movement patterns, things that you've probably done before with little subtle variations to keep you interested and to keep your body adapting. I'll see you next time. Again, thanks for joining me. I'm Marcus Philly with Functional Bodybuilding. Okay, I hope you guys had a good workout. I know I'm feeling it. What I like to do after a workout is just a, a very simple cool down. Um, and a cool down might look like getting on the bike, going for a walk to kind of let the blood flow, uh, get out of the extremities, get out of the legs, get out of the arms, bring the heart rate down a little bit. Then I'll do some static stretching. I'm not trying to push myself super deep into these stretches. This is simply just a chance for my whole system to sort of calm down. So let's get into some of those stretches right now. We're gonna start with just a basic lunge, okay? Don't have to, again, don't have to go too deep into this. And I wanna talk a little bit about what you just experienced. Some of the things that we were working on, right? We were working on that time under tension. I'm sure you were feeling it. I know I was, but getting that extra slow contraction, uh, whether you're under heavy load or modest load like we were using today, that is a way to make the muscles or the muscle group that you're working, you know, get that much more metabolic effect, that much more training effect, push it to force your brain to recruit more muscles. All of that is going to increase the likelihood of an adaptation, a proper stress response that gets your body to change. The great thing about using time under tension principles, which we use a lot of in functional bodybuilding, is you don't have to use a ton of weight to get a great stimulus in your muscles. So you can avoid heavy weight injuries or tweaks and aches and pains, plus the stress and the strain on your brain, your mental state to go into the gym and push heavy weights can sometimes be uh, a little bit daunting for people, especially if you're just getting back into it. So time under tension. Efficiency, that every minute on the minute is a great efficiency pro uh, protocol because it keeps you on the clock. It keeps you focused, right? Let's go ahead and switch sides. It keeps you focused. It's so easy to lose track of time when you're in the gym, when you're doing a workout, you check your phone, let me look at this email, let me check this Instagram post. Hey, you got that clock going. And I didn't overwhelm you with too many repetitions on every single minute. The goal was to make sure you could finish every single minute with plenty of rest time. So we accomplished that, keep you focused. So there's the efficiency of this style of training. Then there's the range of motion, right? We were working on hitting deep ranges of motion in every movement pattern. By working range of motion within your resistance training in your workouts, you get to improve your mobility. You don't need to stretch an additional hour or 30 minutes every day to improve your flexibility. You need to bring that awareness into your training. So if you train full range of motion and you work your mobility and flexibility when you're training, you can kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. You can get some strength work, you can improve range of motion, mobility improves as well. Okay, the last one. So that was a lunge on each side. Let's say we did about 60 to 90 seconds. This is another great finisher that I love. It's called static back. What you're gonna need is you're gonna need something about this height of a bench. All right, when I sit down on my back, my knees are at 90 degrees, my hips are at 90 degrees. I'm going to fold my arms wide open like this. This is great for pelvic, thoracic spine, low back alignment, you should be relaxed in your legs, all right? You shouldn't be holding tension here or in your belly, palms up to the sky, and just do some belly breath. So deep breath in, four seconds in, four seconds out. And I'll usually finish each session like this, again, for about 90 seconds to two minutes. You can take it up to five or 10 minutes. This is a great protocol to work on hip alignment if you're feeling a little bit out of alignment or you're a little tweaked out in your low back. Anyhow, I wanted to give you guys that tool as a final thought on this session that we just did. Thanks for joining me. If you wanna learn more about functional bodybuilding, please come check us out, check out our website, join any of our free programs that we have available. We'll see you guys next time. Have a wonderful start to 2021.